All right, uh, so we're going to take a look at this problem. Uh, it asks us, it gives us a function of x, y, and z, uh, as well as a region, and we're asked to calculate the value of uh, volume by first projecting s into the x, y plane, and then projecting s into the x, z plane. So we're going to take a look at the x, y plane first. Um, in order to project into the x, y plane, um, we have x, the x axis and the y axis, which are two of our... Um, Two of our bounds here, as you can see, the tetrahedron is bound in the fir first octant by the coordinate planes. So y and x, the dotted line for y, the solid line for x. Set z equal to 0. And then we just want to solve for y, so we get a function of y in the xy plane. And now we have our function of y uh, as 1 half times quantity 3 minus x. So I'm going to graph that. Um, we're going to have at y equals um, 3 halves, we're going to have a uh, point. So our y-intercept, it's going to look like this. Our y-intercept is going to be at 0, 3 halves. Our x-intercept is going to be at 3, 0. And now that we have our uh, function of y, we can now integrate with respect to uh, our whole, fun whole function. Um, so we need a bounds for z here. Um, we're given that the bound, uh, the lower bound for z is the z plane. So the lower bound is just 0. Our upper bound is just going to be um, this entire function as a function of z. Um, our lower bound for y, as stated before, is 0. And our upper bound is going to be this function of x. Uh, and then our lower bound for x, uh, let me just check my notes here. Um, we're just going to set y and z equal to 0 in the equation down here. And we're going to get our upper bound for x as 3. Our lower bound is just 0, as stated originally. Um, and now we just need to plug in the function, which is just x here, and uh, integrate. We're going to integrate with respect to z first, uh, and then y second, and then x third. Um, so integrating with respect to z here is fairly simple. Um, all we have to do is just add the z in. So we're going to multiply that x by z and evaluate from z equals 0 to z equals 3 minus x minus 2y. Um, plugging in z equals 0 is uh, actually extremely simple here since uh, there's just one term has a z in it. That's just going to drop out for 0. So we're only going to be left with whatever is multiplied by our top here. So now we're going to integrate with respect to y in this next one. Um, this first term I'm going to group together um, because there's no y in that, so that's just treated as a constant. And then uh, 2xy, negative 2xy is going to become a negative xy squared. And we're going to evaluate that from y equals 0 to y equals 1 half 3 minus x. So before I go ahead and actually plug these values in for y and uh, carry everything through, uh, let's take a look at what's going to drop out. Um, for our lower bound is y equals 0. You can see that each term has a function of y in it. So uh, both of those are going to just drop out. And we're only going to have 
uh, be left with our upper bound. Okay, so um, we have a couple one halves in here, so we want to take those out, um, make this a little bit more simple on ourselves here. Um, and also, I'm going to skip a step here, and you can see here we can take out an x, and then once we factor this, we'll actually be left with two three minus x's in this term. Um, these two here can combine, we can simplify that just to be three minus x squared. And you'll see that these two are actually uh, common terms, so we can actually just cancel here. And we're going to have uh, again, I'm going to take out another half here uh, just to make this inside a little bit more simple for us. Um, but now we're actually going to have to carry out this 3 minus x all squared in our next step. should be a dx in here. So our final integral is pretty simple to carry out. Uh, I'm going to bring it on over here just so you guys can see it a little better. Um, so that 9x is going to become a 9 halves x squared. Six x squared is going to become two negative two x cubed. And x cubed is going to become 1 fourth x squared. Or, excuse me, x to the fourth. Uh, and then we just evaluate this uh, from 0 to 3. Uh, you guys can take a little calculator work to do this. Um, but once you're all set, you should find out that the final answer is 27 over 16. So we've done this. We've projected into the xy plane. Uh, now part b of the problem actually asks us to project into uh, the xz plane. So here on this board, I have, again, our planes written out so we can see what our lower bounds for our integrals are going to be. Um, z, the dotted line, is the z axis. Um, so we're in the first octant, so we're going to be up here. Um, x, again, we're in x positive, so we're going to be in this region. Um, and then to project into the xz plane, Again, like uh, setting z equal to 0, instead this time we're going to set y equal to 0. And then simply just solving for z. Um, so we have a line that looks like this with uh, x and y intercepts at 0, 3 and 3 comma 0. Um, so now we uh, are just going to follow similar steps as the first one. 
Uh, we need to set our original function as a function of y, so we can determine our upper bounds for that. So setting that, we're going to get this. So as a function of x and z, y equals 1 half times quantity 3 minus x minus z. That's our upper bound for uh, the y. For z, our upper bound is going to be 3 minus x. And then similar to the first one, our upper bound is going to be uh, just 3. And we can carry out the integral as we did before. Uh, you guys will notice, hopefully, we find the same value um, for uh, the iterated integral. So all our lower bounds are 0. Again, as in the first one, upper bound for z, or excuse me, for y. Upper bound for z and for x. Again, our function is just x, nice and simple to work with. This time we're taking the integral with respect to y first because y is our first function. Then dz dx. Uh, again, this is pretty simple. Um, like the first term, there is no y term here, so uh, x acts like a constant. We get xy evaluated from y equals 0 to y equals 1 half quantity 3 minus x minus z. Um, we're going to take that down here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take this one half outside just to make everything a lot easier. And then just multiply that x on through the function of y. Um, so you'll notice that we have a very similar function on this side as we did on the other side um, for the rest of our, uh, for projecting into the xy plane, excuse me. Um, we're going to continue to carry this out just so you guys notice uh, the pattern and how um, the problems are related. Um, so again, we're going to group 3x minus x squared like a constant because there's no uh, terms of z. Um, and this xz is going to become a 1 half xz squared. Oh, and we're going to evaluate that uh, 0, z equals 0 to z equals 3 minus x. So again, don't quite uh, evaluate that immediately because there might be some terms that we can cancel out like in the first section. Uh, so again, I'm going to notice that I can pull the x right out of there, um, and we're going to have uh, both terms have a 3 minus x squared. Um, that way we can cancel th some things out. Uh, mistakenly didn't pull the 1 half out down here. Uh, so again, we can see that this is very similar to what we uh, received in the first half of the problem. Uh, again, now that we've simplified this term, I can now pull another one half out. So it's going to be a fourth and then our integral inside is actually the same as the first half of the problem. Uh, 
Uh, and again, with a little calculator work, we're going to find out that our final answer is 27 sixteenths. So you can see um, that the value um, of this integral is 27 sixteenths, um, both in the xy plane and in the xz plane.